Well, hello again, everybody. This is Papa Smurf over at miniwargaming.com. What we're going to do in this video is go through three different samples of construction work. They're all masonry, of course. This one here is called Stack Bond. And aesthetically, it's very pleasing. You see how those bricks or blocks are stacked one on top of another? It's very pleasant to look at. However, it's very weak. This whole wall, there is nothing holding this together except the mortar joint. So in construction, what people do is every second or third course, they put a layer of reinforcing wire and they cement it right in. It's called Durawall. Also, every four feet, a steel reinforcing rod is put down the hole and it's filled up with concrete. It's really strong when we get finished with it. This is called running bond. This is the kind of brickwork that most people are familiar with. And we're going to be painting that together. I, I like the look of it too. The third kind we're going to do, well, we call that unprocessed. We're going to do that together. Okay, let's go. Well, the first thing I have to do is remove the paper off of one side of the foam board. And I've done that uh, many times in different videos, but I'm going to go do that right now so that we can prepare this for our marks that we have to make on the foam. I've cleaned the paper off of one side and uh, an interesting thing happens. I don't know if it's the removal of the paper itself or the hot water, but there's a slight warping effect that takes place. So what I'm going to do uh, while I'm painting this one, I'm going to take this one, now that I've dried them off, I'm going to place them like this, and I'm going to put this great big Warhammer book on top of them. Maybe that'll take out some of the warp. We'll see. I'm proceeding to paint the mortar joints just like I did with this uh, stack bonded unit here. This doesn't take very long at all. You just have to make sure that the paint goes in every one of those joints. No white styrofoam is to be shown. don't have to be artistic about this. Just slap the paint to it. Now while the paint is drying on this one, I can start marking out the unprocessed one. For our samples, all of these bricks are exactly one half inch in length. So that's how I'm going to mark them off. Now the height of these bricks are exactly one quarter of an inch. So that's what we mark off on each end of this little sample. Very quick, see? It's done. The next step is to draw all of these horizontal joints and indent with your pencil. You not only make a mark with the pencil, you make an indentation in that soft styrofoam and that becomes your mortar joint. In this sample, let's start with a row of bricks along the bottom. That's easy, we just draw them in. Now up here, what do we draw in? We have to count the courses to make sure that we're drawing in the right one on the right row. So this long brick here, we call that a stretcher. And this one that sits above it, halfway across it like that, this little half brick here, we call that a header. So that's a stretcher, that's a header. Let's count them all the way up. Stretcher, header, stretcher, header, stretcher. Aha. Uh -huh.
That top brick is a header, according to my count. Now, for this third kind, we have to determine which layer is our bonding layer. So pick one, it doesn't matter. Let's say we pick the one right in the middle, this one right here. So we're going to leave that. We're not going to make any marks on that for the time being. We're going to mark up the rest, and then we're going to mark that special. Avoid this one. This is our bonding layer. Don't put any marks on that. Not yet. There, it's all done. Except for this bonding layer right in the very middle of the wall. Well, what is that? What is a bonding layer? Well, let's just assume that this wall was two layers of brick thick. How far can you go up before you put a row of bricks across your wall to bind it all together? And you would see the ends or the headers across here. Well, that's all I'm going to draw in right now. And those are quarter inch increments. See how that bonding layer is right in the very middle of the wall? That's the difference between running bond and this. With this running bond, there's only one layer in the wall, but here there's two or more, so they have to be bound together by another layer of bricks on top of so many layers, four, five, whatever they do in practice. And so that's all I've drawn in. The next step is to paint the mortar joints. Put a little bit more into the joints and brush around, get off the excess, and that's good to go. Now while that's drying, let's start painting the stack bonded one. I'm using this sponge for this sample as well, just to see if I can cover ground quickly. Oh yes. Very fast. To avoid getting any mortar into those joints, this brush has to be very dry before you start patting it down. There, nice effect. Didn't take long. Fast. I like the sponge because it, uh, it colors the bricks very, very rapidly. Just by uh, tapping it with a very dry sponge, tiny bit of paint, it goes very fast. And as I can look at this little sample here, there's only about two little spots where I might have to touch up a mortar joint, which is okay for me, considering the fast pace at which I painted this. These other samples have dried enough, so I'm going to dry brush them in red as well. So here we go. I really like this sponge. It puts the paint on so fast. So in model building, when you're constructing and painting whole walls, the same principles apply and it will go on fast with a nice little sponge like this. Okay, where's the next one?
Okay, we're done, except for touch-ups. And there is another coat of paint that goes on this. We mix half red, half orange, and then we dry brush, just to get that old weather effect. A little bit of orange. Not much paint, though, not much paint. Not much. Yeah, that's it. That's the effect I was looking for. Old weathered brick. And the last one. This doesn't take long. Very little paint needed. Just putting, putting a splattering of orange on top of the red. And we're all done, except for um, any touch-ups. If there's a mortar joint that had a little bit of red splattered in it, I'll try and uh, paint the mortar joint. But other than that, we're all done. Didn't take long. Those are just three samples of kinds of masonry that you can put around any one of these models. But these are just samples. What I've got planned for my next video is a lot more complex. If you'd like to watch these videos and pick up these tips in model making, then subscribe to Papa Smurf at miniwargaming.com. Thank you.